let's see. Let me give you presenter status so that you can like share your screen and stuff. OK, all right, so you should be a presenter now, so you can just begin whenever uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen and I can hear you, so you're great. OK. OK, let's start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aysalqin. I'm a master's student. This is my first semester. Uh, because I do not have a thesis, um, I decided to uh, choose one uh, topic in the field I'm currently interested in. I am actually interested in data mining uh, and computer vision lately. So I have chosen age detection with OpenCV and deep learning as a, a starting topic uh, in my, uh, say, computer vision journey. So this is the outline of my today's presentation. First, we'll start with uh, a short definition of computer vision. Then we'll start with, then we'll proceed with age detection theory, uh, then age detection implementation. Uh, fourthly, age detection results and further considerations. And finally, we will summarize up the points. So what is computer vision? Um, obviously, it is the hottest research field within deep learning. It is the intersection of uh, computer science, um, uh, mathematics, engineering, physics, biology, and psychology. Each of these um, sciences has uh, subfields uh, so what is a computer what is computer vision according to this um, book over here it is a com it is computing properties of the three-dimensional world from one or more digital images so what are the applications there are countless applications of computer vision we have face recognition uh, for instance snapchat and Facebook uh, we have image trivial um, Google Images deploys this uh, application. We have gaming and controls. Um, some of you may know Microsoft Kinect. Uh, there is surveillance, there is biometrics, uh, there are smart cars, and um, many other applications. Uh, let's proceed. Okay, so there are also several, uh, actually many computer vision tools and libraries deployed nowadays. So obviously we start with OpenCV. It is um, uh, an open source computer vision library uh, that contains many different functions for computer vision and machine learning. Uh, it is uh, sort of very old. old. Uh, then MATLAB. Um, <clears throat> MATLAB is uh, a numerical computing environment um, and it is uh, deployed by researchers mostly. Then we have TensorFlow and PyTorch. Uh, these two are sort of uh, competing each other with PyTorch being <clears throat> a framework developed by Facebook AI research team and TensorFlow uh, being the product of Google Brain. Then we have uh, CUDA or CUDA, Compute Unified Device Architecture. Um, it is a parallel computing platform uh, which was created by NVIDIA. Then, we'll then we have um, Simple CV. Uh, Simple CV is, um, um, I do not know it like uh, in detail, but it is very simple. Like you don't need to know coding to, uh, to deploy this um, uh, framework. Then we have uh, YOLO and many of us of you uh, know it for sure. <clears throat> then we have Booth CV. Uh, Booth CV is an open source library that is written specifically for real time computer vision. Um, and um, it is uh, available for Java implementation. And uh, there are some other tools and libraries for computer vision. <clears throat> uh, let's uh, proceed. Uh, so uh, let's start with age detection theory. What is age detection? It is the process of automatically discerning the age of a person solely from a photo of their face. Uh, typically, um, uh, age detection is implemented as a two-stage process. Firstly, we detect face 
in the input image or video stream. And secondly, we extract the face ROI and apply the age detector algorithm to predict the age of the person. <clears throat> so for uh, stage one, uh, any face detector capable of producing bounding boxes for faces in an image can be used. Uh, so first we have hard cascades, um, we have uh, hog and linear SVM, we have SSDs, YOLO, uh, and faster RCNNs. <clears throat> uh, so hard cascades, uh, I will just explain this um, uh, detections very shortly. Uh, hair cascades are very old um, um, and uh, but what uh, is the downside of hair cascades is that um, they are um, they are they are actually very fast but uh, they are not much accurate uh, actually here I have written uh, down the downsides of the of some of the uh, techniques and also higher cascades are highly prone to false positive detections. Uh, next we have HOG and linear SVM. These models are more accurate than higher cascades but they are slower and also they are not uh, tolerant with occlusion. Uh, occlusion means uh, uh, not all of the face is visible uh, and viewpoint changes which means different views of the face. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, these three uh, detection techniques are deep learning based phase detectors and they are the most robust. They will give us the best accuracy, but, uh, but of course this implies that they will require more computational resources. <clears throat> so um, when um, deciding on a phase detector, we need to ask ourselves whether we need uh, speed or accuracy more. Uh, so uh, this was the first stage. Uh, at the first stage, as I said, we detect face. The second stage, the final stage, so uh, we um, have got the bounding box coordinates of the face. Uh, then what we do, we extract the face region of interest um, and ignore the rest of the image or frame for real time detections. <clears throat> Uh, doing so allows the age detector to focus solely on the person's face and not on any other irrelevant noise in the image. <clears throat> uh, secondly, the face region of interest is then passed through the model, yielding the actual age prediction. And finally, there are a number of age detector algorithms, but the most popular ones are uh, surely deep learning based age detectors. We'll be using uh, such a deep learning based age detector in our implementation. So <clears throat> let's proceed with the age detector deep learning model. We will be using the model implemented and trained by Levy and Hasnery in their 2015 publication. Here is their publication. In this paper, uh, the authors propose a simplistic Alexnet-like architecture that learns a total of, age, uh, of eight age brackets over here. Uh, the data set is Aiden's data set. It is used to train the model. Uh, here is the uh, representation of the model over here. We have three convolutional layers. We have two fully connected layers and here is uh, the output. Uh, we get uh, our class labels over here. <clears throat> Next, uh, uh, why have we modeled age detection, age detector as a classifier, not as a regressor? Um, actually, it can be treated as a regression problem, but uh, we will see uh, shortly that the output uh, may be very much inaccurate. Um, uh, why, uh, why does it happen? It happens because the, uh, the age prediction is very subjective and based uh, solely on appearance. Uh, let us consider a person in their mid-50s who has never smoked, uh, always was sunscreen, um, had a good uh, daily skin care. Uh, and let us have a look at someone who is in, the, in his or her late 30s, smokes, uh, smokes of a carton a day, works manual labor, has no sun protection, doesn't have a proper skin care. 
uh, surely the first person will be uh, looking much younger. Um, and secondly, let us do not forget the most important driving factor in aging. It is genetics. Uh, some people simply age better than others. So here is the representation of uh, a regressor and here is the representation of, the representation of a classifier. <clears throat> uh, let us proceed. Uh, so uh, what do we uh, see here? Uh, who, who do we see here? Uh, this is Matthew Perry and this is Jennifer Aniston over here. Uh, Jennifer Aniston surely looks amazing. Uh, like, what do you think? What their ages? Uh, I think most of you will uh, say that Jennifer, like, we know their age more or less, but Jennifer Aniston really looks stunning, uh, while Matthew Perry looks old. So, <clears throat> uh, let us let us consider uh, several points. Uh, firstly, could you guess that Matthew Perry is actually a year younger than Jennifer Aniston? Surely no. Uh, on the other hand, could you guess that these actors were in this range of ages? Of ages? Uh, surely yes. Uh, while humans are inherently bad at predicting a single age value, we are actually quite good at predicting at predicting age brackets. So what does it imply? It implies that um, deploying a classifier in the age detection is uh, much better than uh, deploying regressor. Uh, next, Jennifer Aniston genetics uh, is uh, perfect. And of course, uh, if we assume that she had some plastic surgeon, uh, she seems never to never age. Uh, the next point that we need to consider that if a human struggles to accurately predict the age of a person, then surely a machine will struggle as well. Um, and finally, as I've already said, when you start, once you start treating age prediction as a regression problem, it becomes significantly, significantly harder for a model to accurately predict a single value representing that person's image. <clears throat> so the, uh, that is for the age detection theory. Let's uh, continue with um, let's continue with project structure. Uh, this is my project structure. I have implemented it in Jupyter uh, using Python, OpenCV. So we have a face detector, we have an age predictor, we have some test images, and we have our code. So uh, I have decided to paste uh, some uh, code uh, just for visual purposes. Uh, I will uh, quickly verbally explain what is going on here. Uh, so we import all the necessary packages. Over here, we import uh, ArcPass to parse command line arguments. Then we load our, um, oh, I'm sorry. Then we load our pre-trained models. Uh, oh, we load both uh, age detector and phase detector. Uh, so then we load our image and uh, detect uh, our phase region of interest. <clears throat> Next, we loop over phase ROI detections. Uh, and here, uh, we finally perform our age detection. So next, uh, let's uh, look at the results of our code. Um, the, boy, the boy's age is detected um, uh, very well. Uh, the boy is really between this, in this age is in this range. And uh, what about Samuel Jackson? Um, uh, do you know uh, this photo? This photo is his recent photo, and right now he's actually seventy-one years old. But surely he looks very young. So the detector detected uh, wrongly his age. <clears throat> so uh, what can we deduct from this then? Deduce from this then? Uh, firstly, the process of visual age prediction is difficult. It really is difficult. Uh, you cannot rely on the person's actual age. And finally, the most important thing, instead you need to measure the accuracy between the predicted age and the perceived age, not the actual age. So this is important in your um, 
implementations of uh, uh, age detection. <clears throat> so uh, the next issue is how can age prediction results be improved? Here uh, is the confusion uh, matrix. Um, here we see that one of the biggest issues with age prediction model uh, trained by Levy and Hassner uh, is that it's heavily biased uh, toward the age group of 25 to 32. Uh, it uh, unfortunately means that our model may predict um, uh, this age group when in fact the actual age belongs to a different age bracket. <clears throat> so how do we, how can we overcome it? So we can gather additional training data uh, for the other age groups to help balance the data set. Secondly, we can apply class weighting to handle class imbalance. Uh, next, we can uh, be sort of more aggressive with data augmentation. Fourthly, we can implement additional regularization when training the model. Um, and finally, we can uh, improve the results by using face alignment. Face alignment uh, identifies the geometric structure of faces and then attempts to obtain a canonical alignment of the face based on translation scale and rotation, but it's a separate topic. I'm not going uh, like uh, further into it. And so this is the summary of uh, my presentation. First, we saw some popular computer vision application areas and tools. Then we learned how to perform age detection with OpenCV and deep learning. Uh, so to do so, we utilized the pre-trained model, which allowed us to predict eight different age groups with reasonably high accuracy. However, we must recognize that age prediction is a challenging problem. We saw it. Uh, next, uh, there are a number of factors that determine how old a person visually appears, including his or her lifestyle, work, smoking habits, um, and most importantly, genetics. It is very important. And also, uh, we should keep in mind that people uh, purposely try to hide their age. And from this, we can deduce that if a human struggles to accurately predict someone's age, then surely a machine uh, learning model will, will struggle as well. Uh, so we must assess all age prediction results in terms of perceived age rather than actual age. So uh, that's it for my presentation. Um, I'm done. If you have any questions, um, you may ask. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ali Salkin. So I'll open it up for uh, any questions. Uh, you, it was interesting for you to talk about uh, uh, Jennifer Aniston and Matthew Perry because uh, I can remember being uh, a younger and my older sister watched that the show Friends. Uh, I didn't watch it, but... I can remember they were very young back then. So, uh, yeah, it is interesting to see how the two of them have aged quite differently. Um, yes, but Jennifer Aniston is is a role model. Yeah. So, but I'll open it up for questions. If anyone else wants to uh, ask something before we move on. Actually, I want to ask a short question. Just a second. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, actually, I, I'm curious about uh, what are the features I use to train the deep learning models for age detection. Um, I have used the pre-trained model, but um, uh, I have also tried to train uh, the model by myself. Um, I can share it with you. Uh, as I understand, you use pretty trained uh, models for age detection uh, or libraries, something like that. Do you know what uh, features are fed into the model? I'm curious about that actually. Uh, yes, yes. Um, if I have some time, I can uh, sh I can show it uh, like uh, in my code. Uh, can you give me uh, two minutes to access it? Okay. If you don't have time, uh, we can make it uh, after class or it's up to Professor actually. Uh, yeah, if, if, um, 
if you're if you're having it readily available where you could show it, uh, we can do that. Otherwise, uh, maybe um, you know, if anybody else would be interested, uh, we could find another way rather than the taking yeah. the time here to do it's that. Kind of off topic, actually. <laughs> What's that now? It's kind of uh, off topic of the presentation. Actually, I'm just curious about the implementation of uh, the feature set. Yeah. So I would like to know. So uh, what are what are your ideas for what what application for you know age detection? Like where what applications would that have in in what fields? Uh, you know, I, it's one of those things where it's like I, I can understand you know why we might want to just 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 to kind of figure out can we look at can we have a model that could look at someone's face and. Um, kind of determine their age, but one, one, what applications would that be? And then another question that comes to mind too is, uh, would the model also use any other um, things other than just the face? Uh, so like, for example, maybe the clothing style that someone's wearing, because, uh, you know, they, there's a lot of discussion about generations and how there's different generation, you know, generation X, uh, um, boomer generation this is all american stuff but uh boomer generation generation x millennials and, and all that and how we all dress differently we all kind of you know wear your hair differently and stuff so would would those also be something that a model could be used to try to determine someone's age as well Um, um, I think I got your point, Professor. Uh, you said about clothing. Uh, you know, clothing hasn't been deployed uh, uh, here as a feature, uh, but it would be a good point, actually. And then my first question was, you know, what app, what areas of application would that be used? Because because I, I know. Uh, Facial recognition for the purpose of like accessing my phone, for example, my, my phone doesn't have that, but I know some people who do. The, the phone doesn't care how old I am for me to gain access to it. It just cares, is it my face that it's looking at? Uh, what applications would there be for knowing someone's age? What, what did you find in your research? Uh, professor, actually, I haven't uh, thought about it, but it's a good point. Uh, I definitely should look for where it is implemented. Um, well, maybe it can be uh, like it's just my um, assumptions. Age detection may be used um, maybe in hospitals, mm. uh, but I don't know if it is used at all like uh, maybe like uh, when in the market when there is uh, when there are lines maybe but it, i don't think it is used uh, to either it is used either mm -hmm. cool thank you right. can i add something uh, for this sure go ahead uh, so it can be used, for example, for some, uh, so that for some of the surveys they used cameras. For example, if we do have a street uh, with uh, many different markets, so they try to use these cameras in order to check or to know uh, the ages or uh, of the people that are frequently, for for example, going to that market. It can be used for some surveys as well. Just to know, for example, uh, young people are uh, frequently going to this market and some other age uh, people are going to the other market, so it can be used also for this purpose. Uh, hi. Yes, thank you. It's a good point, yes. Uh, so uh, let me, for time's sake, uh, let me talk about what Seth and Mehmet here are, are talking through. I, I think Seth's point is that it would not be reliable, that clothing would not actually be a very reliable feature uh, for lots of different reasons. Even people within the same age range don't dress the same. Uh, is probably, I, I would imagine, or things like what he's thinking, that it would not be a very reliable feature to use. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but me, you know, being somewhat older and also having parents that are even older than than I am, I think about, you know, old pictures of my dad from the 60s and 70s wearing these like leisure suits and stuff and and think about the style, how style has changed. And so that's what that's where my mind was going. But uh, all right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, if there is, please don't please let me know and stop me before I move on. But if there aren't any other questions, then Mohammed Sanwal, you can go ahead and prepare. Let's see, I'll go ahead and switch. I'll stop the recording.